What the hell is going on? Is it consequences, God's judgment, or demonic attacks? Am I cursed? What's up? That's the name of this message. Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. We are God's Church of Love online on Saturday, and we are about to go into the Word. Joshua chapter 7 with Pat's Two Cents. All right. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. I, I got to stop there. The thing that gets me about that is that was one person. That wasn't his family. That was one person. The son of this, the son of that boils down to Achan. One person committed a sin and the whole nation of Israel had to suffer for it. Check this out. And Joshua, he now he knew nothing about it. Verse two, he knew nothing about what had gone down. How many of you are suffering in your families? because of things your children are doing under the cuff, because of, of something that one member of the family is doing. And the consequences just bleed into the whole family. All right. And everybody suffers. Verse two, and Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside Bethaven, on the east side of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, go up and view the country, and the men went up and viewed Ai. And they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai, and make not all the people to labor thither, for there are but a few. So there went up thither of the people about three thousand men, and they fled before the men of Ai. And the men, of, the men of Ai smote them, about 30 and 6 men, for they chased them from before the gate, even unto Shebarim, and smote them in the going down. Wherefore the hearts of the people melted and became as water. Now, mm, mm, mm. this is the key verse right here. Their hearts melted and they became as water. But I must read on because there's a second key verse as well. Verse 6, And Joshua rent his clothes and fell to the earth upon the face because, upon his face, because the ark of the Lord, oh, I got to read that again. And Joshua rent his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord until eventide. He and the elders of Israel and put dust on their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord, wherefore hast thou at all brought this people over Jordan to deliver us unto the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? Would to God we had been content and dwelt on the other side, Jordan. <laughs> oh, Lord, what shall I say when Israel turneth their backs before their enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it and shall environ us around and cut off the, our name from the earth. And what wilt thou do unto thy great name? Oh, he was manipulating left and right, boy. He was crying the blues. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up. Wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? <laughs> Israel hath sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant which I commanded them, for they have even taken of the accursed thing and have also stolen and dissembled also, and they have put
put it even among their own stuff. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turn their backs before their enemies because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you anymore except ye destroy the accursed thing from among you. Up, sanctify the people and say, sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, there is an accursed thing in the midst of thee, O Israel. Thou canst, in other words, you cannot, thou canst not stand before thine enemies until ye take away the accursed thing from among you. <clears throat> now, let me ask you this. For those of you who are battling right now, whether in the natural or in the supernatural, what accursed thing might still be lingering in your midst? What accursed activity are you in? All right, let's move on. In the morning, therefore, ye shall be brought according to your tribes, and it shall be that the tribe which the Lord taketh shall come according to the families thereof, and the family which the Lord shall take shall come by households. And the household which the Lord shall take or choose shall come man by man. And it shall be that he that is taken with the accursed thing shall be burnt with fire, he and all that he hath, because he hath transgressed the covenant of the Lord and because he hath wrought folly in Israel. So Joshua rose up early in the morning and brought Israel by their tribes, and the tribe of Judah was taken or chosen by God. Okay. And he brought the household, and he brought his household man by man. And Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, was taken, chosen, pointed out. All right. And Joshua said unto Achan, my son, this is another key verse, 19 and 20. Let me see. Yeah, 19 and 20. Not, no, excuse me, 19 through 21. This is another key point right here. I want you to be mindful of. Just because you tell it doesn't mean you don't have to pay the consequence. And Joshua said unto Achan, My son, give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel and make confession unto him and tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, he's confessing now, indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and thus and thus have I done. When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonian garment, and two shekels of silver, and a wedge of gold of fifty shekels weight, then I coveted them and took them, and behold, they are hid in the earth, in the midst of my tent, and the silver under it. So Joshua sent messengers, and they ran into the tent, and behold, it was hid in his tent, and the silver under it. And they took them out of the midst of the tent, and brought them unto Joshua, and unto all the children of Israel, and laid them out before the Lord. And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, and the silver in the garment, and the wedge of gold, and his sons, and his daughters, and his oxen, and his asses, and his sheep, and his tent, and all that he had, and they brought them unto the valley of Achor. Mm, this is when it gets bad, y'all. Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones and burned them with fire. 
after they had stoned them with stones. So they stoned them, and after that, they burned them. I mean, they made sure there was nothing left of them. And they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day, so that the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger. Wherefore, the name of that place was called the Valley of Achor unto this day. Now, this is what I want you to look at. You notice in verse 5, in verse 5, they had defeat. Hmm. And because they suffered defeat, their hearts melted. See, when you suffer defeat in your life, when you're in a battle of whatever kind, in a struggle, and you're being defeated by it, or you're being overtaken, overwhelmed by it, and you're being intimidated and discouraged and disheartened and all of that. That comes from sin. Now, it doesn't matter if the sin was committed that caused the problem or if the sin was committed that set up a chain reaction that ended up in consequences that would not have taken place had you not gone down this road or that road or made that choice or that choice. Now, no matter what we all do, we all fall short of the glory of God. So this is not a word of condemnation because therefore now there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ who walk not after the flesh. But there are consequences. That's Pat's two cents. Now, here's a, an example of consequences. I'm going to get back to the struggle. I haven't lost my frame of mind. An example of consequences is a man goes out and cheats on his wife, maybe for the first time in their whole marriage. He just got so discouraged that he just goes out and has him a pity party, pouts, and, and has him a little, a little uh, ball for that night. And he hooks up with somebody, and he gets drunk enough to have the nerve to follow through. He carries out his act of sin and adultery, and then comes home guilt-ridden. And he confesses to his wife, confesses to God, confesses to his church, humbles himself, prays, asks for forgiveness, gets forgiveness, listen, gets forgiveness from God and his wife over time. And then a year later or two years later, during a, a physical exam, he finds out he has full-blown AIDS and he has passed it on to his wife. From that one that one single act. Now that's not God's judgment. That's life's consequences. That's cold-blooded, ain't it? For one act. Now back in the day before Christ, God was hard on sin. But Jesus paid the price. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed it white as snow. But he doesn't always wash away the consequences. Mm, that hit me like a ton of bricks. I'm like, Lord, why do you have me going back to Joshua 7? We did dealt with that recently. I want to deal with this in that. And I was like, Okay, so sometimes, I never saw this before. I've read this thing uh, uh, tons of times. Sometimes, even though, see, sin will bring defeat. Sin will affect our mindset. Sin will build up fear. We have to battle fear when we're getting over the sin. We've gotten forgiven. We've, for we've confessed. We've come clean. But now we have to battle the fear. We, you know, we still are dealing with that. And, sometimes, and the fear is 10 times worse before the confession. The quicker you confess, 
the better your chances, y'all. Don't hold back. See, God says, if you hide your sin, I will expose you. Hmm. But if you expose yourself and your sins, I will hide you. I will maintain your dignity, your reputation. So many of you who are hiding, slipping and sliding, peeping and hiding, doing all your little thing under the, under the cuff on the down low, God will expose it one day. But when he exposes it, it'll be 10 times worse than if you had exposed yourself. So it pays to be honest because the consequences are much milder than they are when you don't come clean. Now, you see what happened with Achan. Achan did not come clean. Achan hid his stuff. He hid his mess. God revealed him. God exposed him. When it says he was, his family was taken, then Achan was taken, that means God pointed the finger. He exposed Achan. And when God exposes you, it hurts 10 times worse than when you expose yourself. Then there's a lot more mercy from God. The whole nation of Israel would not have had to have known about it had Achan come clean before they went to battle. And he and Joshua took it before the Lord and got rid of that. Then the battle would have been won. Achan would have had to pay a few consequences, but I don't think it would have gotten that bad. But when God has to expose you, it's it, this is think of it this way: when God is when He's pressed to the point where you have pressed His patience long enough, and He's at the point where He has to expose you. Think of it this way: this is what's coming to my mind. You know how cops are when they have to chase somebody down the freeway? If you turn yourself into the cops, you're dealt with with a much softer hand. But when the cops have to chase after your behind for miles and they got to pursue you, they got to go through all kind of changes to get to you, Baby, by the time you do give up, by the time your car dies or runs out of gas, your ASS is grass. They are not nice. They are a nasty bunch to deal with. They're angry, they're tired, they're frustrated, and they are highly suspicious of what the heck are you running for? And they are not nice to you. So that's how some people have been hit, beat, even killed. Because the adrenaline is so high. By the time the chase is over, all the cops see is blood. They see red. And they're ready for you. So... It's always better to turn yourself in. It's always better to tell on yourself, expose yourself. And some of you have been hiding long enough. It's time to come clean before God has to come down on you with a hard iron fist. When he comes down, everybody's going to know it. You're going to feel it big time. Way worse than if you come clean now. I don't know who this is for. Well, somebody out there on YouTube, whoever's watching this video, sitting in your house, sitting at the church, preaching out the pulpit, whatever you're doing, running a business, working, whatever your case is, there's something you're doing. Not all of you, but some of you. Something you're doing, you need to come clean with right now. You need to come clean. Because if you don't, this thing is going to blow up in your face. That's your word. It's going to blow up in your face. And you'll pay through the nose for years. Now, and not only you, 
but some of your family members, some of your friends, some of your close, your loved ones, whoever they be, will be paying with you. Even though they had no hand and they didn't have a nickel in their dime because of their affiliation with you, their connection with you, they're paying too, one way or another. Mm. That's why some of you who are in prison, who have been arrested, and you're doing big time now, you're going through all kinds of changes, but you're not the only one. All those people outside that are working and living their own lives, that are still there to support you, have to pay their hard-earned money to send you uh, care packages. They have to take their hard-earned money and send money to you. They're paying too. They're paying extra expenses they would not have to pay had you not been incarcerated in the first place. So yeah, it ain't just your business. It's everybody's business because everybody else gets involved and has to go through the heartache of watching you throw yourself down the toilet by the actions and the choices you make. And I'm not fussing. It's an eye opener. This is what God has given me to deal with. It's kind of a heavy duty message. Okay, so now that you know that there are consequences to hiding sin, there are consequences to some sins, period. Sometimes a, a, a couple of teens, they may be really in love with each other. They may really want to get married. And they, oops, one oops. And up comes baby. Changes the whole scheme of things. All their dreams, all their aspirations change by one night's act. That doesn't mean that God is judging them. That's life's consequences consequences. Things have, you know, when you commit any kind of sin, you have got to go after God, pursue God for his mercy, serious mercy, miracle of mercy. Some of you, just like I could have, could have gotten AIDS, but you didn't. Why? God's mercy. But there are some that God has mercy on your soul, but he allows life's consequences to play out in your life. So yes, you'll make it to heaven because you confessed, you came clean, you asked for forgiveness and all of that. And the mercy is not on this side, it's on the other side. But you will get mercy because you will be with the Lord throughout eternity. But there are some hard prices to pay on this side of the planet. Some of you commit sins unknowingly. Some of you do things against your own bodies. This thing, I got to be careful with this message because it can go everywhere. Okay. There are things that you do with your own body. The kind of foods you eat, the kind of drinks you drink, the things you ingest, whether it's through cigarettes, whether it's through weed, whether it's through alcohol, whether it's through uh, prescription drugs, whether it's through street drugs, whatever the case, you're doing stuff to your body. And some of you don't know the harm it's doing. And one day it's going to rear its ugly head and bite you. And it'll explode in your face. And you'll be stuck on a dialysis machine. Or you will have to have some type of a liver transplant or die early or suffer a lot of illnesses. 
or you'll get a whole lot of things going wrong in your body. And it's crisis after crisis, hospital visit after hospital visit, surgery after surgery, trying to undo all the damage you've done. Now, this is not God's judgment. This is life's consequences. Jesus paid it all. But we still have some bills to pay. It's like you got to pay your light bill. There's some bills in life you have to pay. We have all done things knowingly and unknowingly. When you know that you've done things unknowingly or knowingly, you better beg for God's mercy. And you want to know the surest way to get the most mercy you can get? Forgive, 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 forgive readily. And when you can't do it, tell God you can't and ask God readily to give you the ability and you will. And he will. And you will be able to forgive. Because the more mercy you bestow, the more mercy you receive. Okay, let me not get off on a tangent here. Let me move on so you know that his sin got him in trouble. His sin bit him in the behind and exploded in his face. Now, this is what ended up happening. This is his judgment. This is not just a consequence. This is his judgment. Now, some of you, because of the sins you've committed heartlessly, you weren't trying to repent. You were hiding it. You didn't want to hear nothing anybody else had to say. Because sin will abound, the word says. The love of many will wax cold. And you stop caring. You just do what you're going to do. And dare somebody to say something about it. And mm -hmm, see your attitude determines your altitude. And if your attitude is funky and low, so will your altitude be. Your life will be jacked up, toe up from the floor up. Anyway. Okay. So you find for some of you men and women who have abused your children with your tongue, you slice them up, cut them up, spit, chew them up, spit them out tore down their self-esteem, manipulated them, laid guilt trip after guilt trip after guilt trip, control, 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 attitude, attitude, negativity after negativity, criticism after criticism, put down, put down, put down. You ain't nothing. And then you wonder when you get old why your children don't want to be around you, why you spend your holidays alone. Consequences. You reap what you sow. Mm. What so? The Bible says God is not mocked. He ain't no fool. That's what that means. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So when you feel sorry for old people who are always alone, question, what must they have done in their relationships throughout their life? that makes nobody want to be around them. Now, they might seem soft and innocent now because life will soften your behind. But who knows what kind of a pistol they may have been for most of their lives. But you're still to love them and show them mercy. But understand that that's why some people that seem sweet now, you wonder why nobody wants to be around them. Mm -hmm. They may not have always been that way. They may not have always been the little sweetie pie that you know. All right, moving right along. Now we're going to go to the consequence. What ended up happening? He was pointed out. God pointed his finger. Now there are some people you catch dead in the act and they still won't confess. It's even harder then. Even the law is harder on them then. 
the consequences of fears. But there are people who confess their sin, but they still have to do time. Consequence. Now, this is what I am trying to say. When Achan was pointed out by God, he confessed, didn't he? He finally came clean. It, he had to be exposed before he came clean. Blessed are you who expose yourself. Mm -hmm. you, you, you got a much better place in God's heart because you're telling on yourselves. But this man had to be exposed before he told on himself. And as a result, what ended up happening? He died. He paid the consequence. Not only did he die, his whole family and household was destroyed. You have to remember Anytime God warns, anytime God gives a message like this, that's his love reaching out to you. I love that God gives us time. At, he, he, he pulls our coattail. He did that with me one night. I was driving home. I felt his anger. It was fierce. Scared the boo-boo out of me. I sat there and cried the blues and and ask God to forgive me, and I was exposing myself. I was telling on myself to, to the, the pastor's wife. I was telling on myself to my friend, who was the min uh, one of the ministers of music at my church. I was getting prayer and counsel from two or three other people, and I was uh, my chaplain that I worked with at prison ministry. I wouldn't even preach the gospel at that point. I said, I'm going to take a break until I get my, my life cleaned up again because I'm messing up and I know it. And as a result, God kept me covered. All that could have been, all that could have happened didn't happen because I put my business, I put my mess out there. I was honest up front. I didn't play with God's mercy. I was scared of his wrath. The beginning of wisdom, <laughs> Bible says the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. That's when you start to wise up, when you realize, you know, there's something to fear there. You don't just play with him. He ain't no patsy. So when I felt his anger, I buckled down. I started getting myself lined up and I cut all, this, all my little problems loose. I said, no, I ain't losing out on God for no pair of pants. I don't care how much I love him. I'm not losing out on God. No. And what God did as a result of me cutting it loose, he brought that man back in my life a year later with a marriage proposal, and I had a wonderful marriage. But it could have ended up in despair had I kept my sins covered. I know you're wondering what kind of sin I'm talking about. I fell into sexual sin with my husband when we were dating. That's what I did. And God had mercy on me. I'll never forget how he covered me. How he covered my husband. He gave my husband a warning. This old woman pointed his bony finger in her in his face and warned him. He told me the dream. He said the woman pointed his finger in his face and said, You are, you are, I, I forget what she said, but it was something to the effect of God's gonna judge you if you don't stop this. We both got our warning, and we both said, Love you, see you, wouldn't want to be you, but hey, we got to say goodbye because God spoke and we're not going to play anymore. Even though we, I know I loved him. I wasn't sure how he felt about me, but I know I loved him. But I cut him loose like a disease. 
See, we think we can do what we want to do as long as we want to do it because God is long suffering. When God gives you a warning, baby, you better back up real quick. I'm serious. You better back up. You better back up. It's time to take him seriously when he starts warning. Some of you have had extramarital affairs long enough. Time to cut that loose. Time to shut it down. Some of you have had friendships that you don't need to have. Time to cut it loose. Shut it down. When I cut my my husband loose, who was my I dated him at the time, I did not ever expect to see him again. I expected God to keep him out of my life. I begged God to never let me cross his path because I was so weak to him because I loved him so much. But I gave him up. I gave him up for God's sake, not to manipulate him. For God's sake, because I love God more than I love anybody. And I would not let a human being Come between me and my father, which art in heaven. I will not do that. I don't even want to let me come between me and God. I've asked God many times, take me early. Take me to an early grave before you let me backslide. Because I don't put it past myself to backslide. Anybody's capable of doing it. Ain't nobody that flawless. No, I'm sorry. The, the, the certain trick bags life can throw you away, can pull you all the way out if you're not careful. So, yeah, I cut it loose. Nobody had to expose me in church. God dealt with me and God dealt with Milton. And we both said goodbye. And a year later, we were engaged to be married after having no contact. God had mercy, you guys. Tremendous amount of mercy. Now, this is what I want to ask you. How will God have to deal with you? What will God have to do in your life to make you wake up, smell the coffee, and get it right? How serious are you about getting it together? See, life has consequences of its own. It has nothing to do with God's judgment. It's just consequences. You have sex, you're fertile, you're going to get pregnant, whether you like the guy or not. You have sex with somebody with AIDS, whether you know his name or not, you're going to get pregnant. Or you're going to get AIDS. Or the baby's going to get AIDS. Or both of y'all going to die. I mean, you know, whatever. Or you play around on your wife and you give your wife AIDS. Hmm. Yeah, and your children are there without mother or father, and they're thrown in the system. Consequences. And now they they are living a cursed life because of your sins. What kind of price do you or your loved ones have to pay before you put the brakes on it? Before you expose yourself and say enough is enough. I think that's enough for you to chew on. I think I've said enough. I hope that it's been enough to make you think, to stir you in your spirit. For those of you who know you're not what God wants you to be. God bless you.